Yeah, people are excited about what we're doing because um, it wasn't thought to be possible. They're growing and harvesting oysters right in Tampa Bay. Lost Coast Oyster Company is reviving an industry people thought that was just that, lost. So historically, uh, Tampa Bay has had a, a pretty prolific oyster industry. You know, if we're talking to somebody that's older, they'll, they'll tell us about how their grandfather used to go and, and scrape oysters off the Gandy Bridge. Owner Brian Rossiger is also a marine biologist. He says decades of dredging in the mid-20th century has taken its toll on natural oyster beds in Tampa Bay. That the areas that formerly had oysters here in Tampa Bay, they probably um, aren't producing due to the, the habitat loss. Oysters go back to the very beginning. USF historian Gary Mormino says oysters have a long history in Tampa Bay. Native Americans ate oysters here for thousands of years. Evidence during early U.S. occupation of Florida suggests they tasted pretty good too. In 1824, a soldier at Fort Brook who wrote a diary said, the oysters I've eaten in Tampa Bay are the finest oysters I've ever had in my life. It's, a, it's an excellent tasting oyster, very, uh, very high in salinity and brine, um, kind of has like a, a minerally or like an earthy tone to it, a very complex flavor. And they were plentiful all around the bay. So in St. Petersburg, the, the prized oyster grounds was uh, Big Bayou, and in Tampa it was Rocky Point. When you eat a lot of oysters, you're left with a lot of shells. The problem was how do you get rid of oil, the oyster shells, and, and often they paved the highways. But in the 50s and 60s, water quality was abused and neglected in Tampa Bay, destroying the oyster population. And it was, of all things, an article in the 1981 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue that brought national attention. It declared the Tampa Bay estuary dead, a surprise to the state's governor at the time. Bob Graham, when he heard this, almost choked on his oyster, I mean, uh, uh, because of the bad publicity. They literally, they grow like weeds here. Rossiger says oysters may never be as plentiful as they once were in the Bay, but recent water quality improvement projects are providing hope, at least for the future. And our ability to grow shellfish definitely demonstrate that we're trending in the right direction. Fighting to make the story of Tampa Bay oysters come full circle and keep their great history alive. We hope that we can inspire other people to follow in our path, and we want to put Tampa Bay on the map. If you want a taste of Tampa Bay history, Lost Coast sells their oysters at lostcoastoysters.com. They also sell oysters from other oyster farms all around Florida, so check them out.